Hello children, how are you? I hope you all are fit and fine. Well, I am Satinder Kaur and today I will be taking up lesson 4 of economics for class 9. And the name of the lesson is Food Security in India. Children, you all know that food is essential for living as air is for breathing. Thus, food security is of utmost significance. But food security doesn't mean getting two square meals. It is something more than that. To be precise, food security refers to availability, accessibility and affordability of food to all people at all times. Thus, we see that food security has three dimensions that is availability of food, accessibility and affordability. Let's understand these dimensions one by one. Security. The poorest section of the society might be food insecure most of the times while persons above the poverty line might also be food insecure when the country faces a national disaster or calamity like earthquake, drought, flood, tsunami, widespread failure of crops, causing famine, etc. Now, how is food security affected during a calamity? Due to a natural calamity, say drought, total production of food grains decreases. It creates a shortage of food in the affected areas. Due to shortage of food, the prices go up. At the high prices, some people cannot afford to buy food. If such calamity happens in a very widespread area or is stretched over a longer time period, it may cause a situation of starvation. A massive starvation might take a turn of a famine. A famine is characterized by widespread deaths due to starvation and epidemics caused by forced use of contaminated water or decaying food and loss of body resistance due to weakening from starvation. The most devastating famine that occurred in India was the famine of Bengal in 1943. This famine killed 30 lakh people in the province of Bengal. Do you know children who were affected the most by the famine? The agricultural labourers, fishermen, transport workers and other casual labourers were affected the most by dramatically increasing price of rice. They were the ones who died in this famine. Nothing like the Bengal famine has happened in India again. But it is disturbing to note that even today, there are places like Kalahandi and Kashipur in Odisha where famine-like conditions have been existing for many years and where some starvation deaths have also been reported. Starvation deaths are also reported in Bara district of Rajasthan, Palamu district of Jharkhand and many other remote areas during the recent years. Therefore, food security is needed in a country to ensure food at all times. Now let's talk about the most food insecure groups in India. Although a large section of people suffer from food and nutrition insecurity in India. The worst affected groups are landless people with little or no land to depend upon, traditional artisans, providers of traditional services, petty self-employed workers and destitutes including beggars. In the urban areas, the food insecure families are those whose working members are generally employed in ill-paid occupations and
casual labor market. These workers are largely engaged in seasonal activities and are paid very low wages that just ensure their survival. The social composition along with the inability to buy food also plays a role in food insecurity. The SCs, STs and some sections of the OBCs, that is lower castes among them, who have either poor land base or very low land productivity are prone to food insecurity. The people affected by natural disasters who have to migrate to other areas in search of work are also among the most food insecure people. A high incidence of malnutrition prevails among women. This is a matter of serious concern as it puts even the unborn baby at the risk of malnutrition. A large proportion of pregnant and nursing mothers and children under the age of 5 years constitute an important segment of the food insecure population. According to the National Health and Family Survey 1998-99, the number of such women and children is approximately 11 crore. The food insecure people are disproportionately large in some regions of the country, such as economically backward states with high incidence of poverty, tribal and remote areas, regions more prone to natural disasters, etc. In fact, the states of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Odisha, West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, parts of Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra account for the largest number of food insecure people in the country. Hunger is another aspect indicating food insecurity. Hunger is not just an expression of poverty, it brings about poverty. The attainment of food security therefore involves eliminating current hunger and reducing the risks of future hunger. Hunger has chronic and seasonal dimensions. Chronic hunger is a consequence of diet persistently inadequate in terms of quantity and or quality. Poor people suffer from chronic hunger because of their very low income and in turn inability to buy food even for survival. Seasonal hunger is related to cycles of food growing and harvesting. This is prevalent in rural areas because of the seasonal nature of agricultural activities and in urban areas because of casual labourers. For example, there is less work for casual construction labourers during the rainy season. This type of hunger exists when a person is unable to get work for the entire year. Look at this table showing percentage of households with hunger in India. According to this table, the percentage of seasonal as well as chronic hunger has declined in India. India is aiming at self-sufficiency in food grains since independence. After independence, Indian policy makers adopted all measures to achieve self-sufficiency in food grains. India adopted a new strategy in agriculture which resulted in green revolution, especially in the production of wheat and rice. Indira Gandhi, the then Prime Minister of India, officially recorded the impressive strides of Green Revolution in agriculture by releasing a special stamp entitled Wheat Revolution in July 1968. The success of wheat was later replicated in rice. The increase in food grains was, however, disproportionate. The highest rate of growth was achieved in Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh which was 
44.01 and 30.21 million tons in 2015-16. The total food grain production was 252.22 million tons in 2015-16 and it has changed to 275.68 million tons in 2016-17. Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh recorded a significant production in field of wheat which was 26.87 and 17.69 million tons in 2015-16 respectively. West Bengal and UP on the other hand recorded significant production of rice 15.75 and 12.51 million tons in 2015-16 respectively. Now let's look at the scenario of food security in India. The National Food Security Act which was passed in 2013 provides for food and nutritional security at affordable prices and enables people to live a life with dignity. Under this act, 75% of the rural population and 50% of the urban population have been categorized as eligible households for food security. Since the advent of Green Revolution in the early 1970s, the country has avoided famine even during adverse weather conditions. India has become self-sufficient in food grains during the last 30 years because of a variety of crops grown all over the country. The availability of food grains even in adverse weather conditions or otherwise at the country level has further been ensured with a carefully designed food security system by the government. This system has two components. First, buffer stock. Second, public distribution system. Let's talk about these one by one. Now, what is buffer stock? Buffer stock is the stock of food grains, namely wheat and rice, procured by the government through the Food Corporation of India, known as FCI. The FCI purchases wheat and rice from the farmers in states where there is surplus production. The farmers are paid a pre-announced price for their crops. This price is called minimum support price or MSP. The MSP is declared by the government every year before the sowing season to provide incentives to farmers for raising the production of these crops. The purchased food grains are stored in granaries. Do you know why this buffer stock is created by the government? This is done to distribute food grains in the deficit areas and among the poorer strata of the society at a price lower than the market price, also known as issue price. This also helps resolve the problem of shortage of food during adverse weather conditions or during the periods of calamity. Now, what is the public distribution system? The food procured by the FCI is distributed through government regulated ration shops among the poorer section of the society. This is called the public distribution system or PDS. Russian shops are now present in most localities, villages, towns and cities. There are about 5.5 lakh Russian shops all over the country. Russian shops also known as fair price shops keep stock of food grains, sugar and kerosene for cooking. These items are sold to people at a price lower than the market price. Any family with a ration card can buy a stipulated amount of these items. For example, 35 kg of grains, 
फाइव लीटर्स ऑफ कैरोसिन फाइव के जी ऑफ शुगर एक्सेट्रा एवरी मंथ फ्रॉम द नियर बाय राशन शॉप देर आर थ्री काइंड ऑफ राशन कार्ड अंतोद्या कार्ड फॉर द पुअरेस्ट ऑफ द पुअर बी पी एल कार्ड फॉर दो बिलो पॉवर्टी लाइन एंड ए पी एल कार्ड फॉर ऑल अदर्स द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ राशनिंग इन इंडिया डेट्स बैक टू द नाइनटीन फोर्टीज अगेंस्ट द बैक ड्रॉप ऑफ द बेंगाल फैमिन द राशनिंग सिस्टम वॉज रिवाइव इन द वेक ऑफ एन एक्यूट फूड शॉर्टेज ड्यूरिंग द नाइनटीन सिक्सटीज प्रायर टू द ग्रीन रेवल्यूशन in the wake of the high incidence of poverty levels as reported by the nsso in the mid 1970s three important food intervention programs were introduced public distribution system for food grains integrated child development services and food for work over the years Several new programs have been launched and some have been restructured with the growing experience of administering the programs. At present there are several poverty alleviation programs mostly in rural areas which have an explicit food component also. While some of the programs such as PDS, midday meals etc are ex exclusively food security programs most of the paps that is poverty alleviation programs also enhance food security employment programs greatly contribute to food security by increasing the income of the poor now let's move ahead and look at the current status of the public distribution system public distribution system is the most important step taken by the government of india towards ensuring food security in the beginning the coverage of the pds was universal with no discrimination between the poor and the non poor over the years the policy related to pds has been revised to make it more efficient and targeted in 1992 revamped public distribution system was introduced in 1700 blocks in the country the target was to provide the benefits of pds to remote and backward areas from june 1997 in a renewed attempt targeted public distribution system was introduced to adopt the principle of targeting the poor in all areas it was for the first time that a differential price policy was adopted for poor and non poor further in 2000 two special schemes were launched that is antodya anna yojana and annapurna scheme with special target groups of poorest of the poor and indigent senior citizens respectively the functioning of these two schemes was linked with the existing network of the pds Antodya Anna Yojana known as AAY was launched in December 2000 under this scheme 1 crore of the poorest among the BPL families covered under the targeted public distribution system were identified poor families were identified by the respective state rural development departments through a below poverty line survey 25 kilograms of food grains were made available to each eligible family at a highly subsidized rate of rupees 2 per kg for wheat and rupees 3 per kg for rice this quantity has been enhanced from 25 to 35 kg with effect from april 2002 the scheme has been further expanded twice by additional 50 lakh bpl families in june 2003 and in august 2004 with this increase 2 crore families have been covered under the antodya anna yojana the pds has proved to be the most effective instrument of government policy over the years in stabilizing prices and making food available to consumers at affordable prices 
it has been instrumental in averting widespread hunger and famine by supplying food from surplus region of the country to the deficit ones. In addition, the prices have been under revision in favor of poor households in general. The system, including the minimum support price and procurement, has contributed to an in increase in food grain production and provided income security to farmers in certain regions. However, the public distribution system has faced severe criticism on several grounds. Instances of hunger are prevalent despite overflowing granaries. FCI go-downs are overflowing with grains, with some rotting away and some being eaten by rats. In 2014, the stock of wheat and rice with FCI was 65.3 million tons, which was much more than the minimum buffer norms. However, these remained consistently higher than the buffer norms. The situation improved with the distribution of food grains under different schemes launched by the government. There is general consensus that high level of buffer stocks of food grains is very undesirable and can be wasteful. The storage of massive food stocks has been responsible for high carrying costs in addition to wastage and deterioration in grain quality. So, freezing of MSP for a few years should be considered seriously. The increased food grains procurement at enhanced MSP is the result of the pressure exerted by leading food grain producing states such as Punjab, Haryana and Andhra Pradesh. Moreover, as the procurement is concentrated in a few prosperous regions and mainly of two crops, wheat and rice, increase in MSP has induced farmers, particularly in surplus states, to divert land from production of coarse grains. PDS dealers are sometimes found resorting to malpractices like Diverting the grains to open market to get better margin, selling poor quality grains at ration shops and irregular opening of the shops. It is common to find that ration shops regularly have unsold stocks of poor quality grains left. This has proved to be a big problem. When ration shops are unable to sell a massive stock of food grains, piles up with the FCI. In recent years, there is another factor that has led to the decline of the PDS. Earlier, every family, poor and non-poor, had a ration card with a fixed quota of items such as rice, wheat, sugar, etc. These were sold at the same low price to every family. The three types of cards and the range of prices that you see today did not exist. A large number of families could buy food grains from the ration shops subject to a fixed quota. These included low-income families whose incomes were marginally higher than the below poverty line families. Now, with the TPDS that is targeted public distribution system of three different prices, any family above the poverty line gets very little discount at the ration shop. The price for APL family is almost as high as open market price. So, there is little incentive for them to buy these items from the ration shop. Children, the cooperatives are also playing an important role in food security in India, especially in the southern and western parts of the country. The cooperative societies set up shops to sell low-priced goods to poor people. For example, out of all fair price shops running in Tamil Nadu, around 94% are being run by the cooperatives. In Delhi, Mother Dairy is making strides in provision of milk and vegetables to the consumers at control rate decided by government of Delhi. Amul is another success story of cooperatives in milk and milk products from Gujarat. It has brought about 
the white revolution in the country. These are a few examples of many more cooperatives running in different parts of the country, ensuring food security of different sections of society. Similarly, in Maharashtra, Academy of Development Science has facilitated a network of NGOs for setting up grain banks in different regions. ADS organizes training and capacity building programs on food security for NGOs. Grain banks are now slowly taking shape in different parts of Maharashtra. ADS efforts to set up grain banks to facilitate replication through other NGOs and to influence the government's policy on food security are thus paying rich dividends. The ADS Grain Bank program is acknowledged as a successful and innovative food security intervention. With this, we come to the end of today's lesson. I hope you understood it well. Now, it's time to take up a few questions related to the chapter. Now, let's answer these questions. First, we have some MCQs and you have to choose the correct option. The first question is, Antodya cards are given to the poor, the poorest of the poor, those below poverty line or all of the above. And the correct option is poorest of the poor. The second question is fair price shops sell and the options are sugar, kerosene oil, wheat or all of the above. And the correct option is yes, all of the above. The third question is which state is associated with Amul? And the options are Maharashtra, Gujarat, West Bengal or Kerala. Yes, it is Gujarat. Very good. Now, let's match these columns. RPDS or Revamped Public Distribution System. It was introduced in Yes, 1992. Next, we have Bengal famine. Bengal famine occurred in? Yes, 1943. Next, we have Antodya Anna Yojana, which was started by the Government of India in 2000. Very good. And the last one, the National Food Security Act, it was passed in 2013. Very good. With this, we come to the end of today's video. I'm sure you liked it and understood the different dimensions of food security and the various steps taken by the government of India towards ensuring food security in the country. You also learnt about various cooperatives and NGOs working intensively in this direction. That's all for today. I'll be back with some more interesting videos. Till then, stay healthy, stay happy.